bisher gemacht hat, die uns bei der Programmauswahl hier aber unglaublich fasziniert hat. Aufgrund der Vielfalt von Musik, die bei Ihnen eine große Rolle spielt, aufgrund der Texte dessen, was Sie wirklich zu sagen haben. The New African Griots. Thank you. All right, Germany. Thank <laughs> you. 
sometimes it gets so hard to write these words because life in America, it seems so absurd. It seems useless to have anything to say because we should be dealing with this thing another way. A way that'll make us appear to be more as men and women instead of boys and girls needing our parents' permission in a rapidly changing world. A world where each race will have to have its own fig tree and vine is now the unfolding of that time. But America has a fierce grip on our minds. Sometimes it seems like our very souls. Black on black crime and unwillingness, it seems like to unite. At any moment, we might have to fight. A system that's a freak, a shyster, and a sham. And about African people, this proof, it doesn't give a damn. They'd like to see us all dead. And why is it so hard for us to get this through our heads? Genocide against us every day in every conceivable way. Especially the African man. And have we forgotten the King Alfred plan? Now they're talking about reinstating new laws in order to be able to legally let the people. Where even if we shouted from the high steeple that we're tired of what happens to our people. The murder, the killing, the brutality, the rape. We are all standing here at Hell's Gate. It could move toward picking up that gun. And it wouldn't be any fun. We'll get down some serious business. Say we got at least 100,000 strong. Let these folks know that they're wrong. That Brother Mamir isn't going to the electric chair. And we'd be willing to stand up to any of their dead. We want despair. We'll just do what has to be done. We'll show that might, that force, that spirit when we come together as one. Brother Lamia, baby, <laughs> don't worry about a thing because they're not in control here and there's really no reason for us to show any fear. Brother Mamir himself said these words to us that there's nothing that they can really do to when your deepest principle you do hold true. And let them confront us with the threat of death. That's the most that they can do at its best. But when your perspective you do see clear that threat of death, it holds no fear. Brother Mia said that that's the bottom line. And in the passing of time, the strong ones, they persevere and they stay. The weak ones, they slip and they fade away to the shade in order to escape the possibility of the grave, the heat of things. But we come to know who's who and what's what and who our true brothers and sisters are. Long live George Jackson. Long live Jonathan Jackson. Long live Malcolm X. And long live Brother Mamir. And if by any chance Brother Mamir should die, there should not be a single tear in our eyes. Only blood. If you die, 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 when you realize, lies, lies, open up your eyes, eyes, eyes. If you die, 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 when you realize, lies, lies, open up your eyes, eyes, eyes. If you die, 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 when you realize, lies, lies, open up your eyes, eyes, eyes. If you die, 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 die.
City Courthouse in Marin City, California. He produced a shotgun and several handguns. One which he passed to William Christmas, the other to Rochelle McGee. And he announced to the courtroom that, gentlemen, we are now taking over this courtroom. He took the DA hostage took the judge hostage with a shotgun strapped to his neck. Their demands were that they be set free and that George Jackson be set free, Jonathan's older brother. But the powers that be, Ronald Reagan, being governor at the time, decided that it wouldn't go down like that. They had a van waiting, and as they moved toward the exit and moved toward the van, hundreds of guns and rifles were trained on the van. As they proceeded into the van, and the van moved toward the gate, the hundreds of guns and rifles opened fire on the van. The judge was killed. The DA was killed. 
William Christmas was killed. Jonathan Jackson was killed. And the only surviving member was Rochelle McGee, who's now serving a double life sentence for his part in what took place. A year later, in 1971, George Jackson, at the age of 29 years old, was assassinated in San Quentin Prison in San Quentin, California. George Jackson was a legend in the California penal system around the country and around the world. He was known as one of the Soledad brothers, along with Peter Durango and John Couchet. They were on trial for supposedly throwing a guard from a third story tier. But this was in retaliation to a gunman in a tower shooting down into the exercise yard and killing two guys previous to that incident. As the trial progressed, George Jackson was increasingly isolated. And one night, George was brutally beaten and tortured. But George knew that this is it, that he had to make his bid for freedom. He took out five of the hats in his bed, and as he moved across the yard, a gunman from the tower shot him dead with a bullet straight through his head. Well, when I heard the news over the airways that night, I felt that I had to write this piece for George and Jonathan Jackson. I read George Jackson's great book, Soledad Brother. I read George Jackson's great book, Blood in My Eye. I read George Jackson's great book, Dragons Die Hard. And I felt that it was only fitting that I write this for George and Jonathan Jackson. Two brothers. Two brothers were born into this world of scorn. They were warriors for righteous people. They were strong of heart and very powerful of the mind. They were among the very best of our kind. It was not within them to falter, and the course of things they would alter. The older brother giving strength to the younger one. Being in prison from one to life, he decided to take that time to use his mind so he would know where the blame should go. The man-child, a gun in one hand, great courage in the other. He walked into the Marin City Courthouse to try and save his brother. Bam, 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 bam! But he was gunned down by those clowns who are afraid and wanted him dead. But when the older brother heard what the man-child had done, he knew that their spirits were truly as one. A year had passed since the man-child had fallen, and somehow to the older brother, he must have called Bam, 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 bam! Because he was gunned down, and by those same clowns, who are afraid and wanted him dead. So there was two brothers with deepest of love, one for the other. They were warriors for righteous people. They were strong of heart and very powerful of the mind. They were among the very best.
of our kind. They were two brothers. so hard 
his horn was seen to smoke. And you knew that playing this cat was definitely no joke. They say he played sheets of sound and tried in every way they knew how to push train down. But train didn't mind the talk, for he knew the road he had to walk. Train taught many a young cat how to blow so they would know. So train kept plunging straight ahead, straight ahead till he was dead. Then all those critics in other towns who laughed and put train's music down. Now they wish that train was still around to play that horn because they understand now that that's why John William Cole Train was born. Yeah, Train, play your horn, man. Play that horn, Train. Yeah, baby, play that horn. Cole Train. Drama, Baba Bobby, Bobby Crowder. Mmm. 
image of his heart Then you will come to realize That it's a lot like that love supreme A love supreme A love supreme A love supreme Near me, El Rasul. Near me, El Rasul. <laughs> We'd like to uh, close out with a couple of more things that we've written. One is a uh, piece that we're getting ready to do is on our upcoming recording that we're in the process of working on now. We have a recording out now that's called To Tell the Truth, To Tell the Truth, The New African Griots on CD and cassette. We have them here on sale. We like to do something in relationship to what happened in Philadelphia in 1985. A lot of us around the world have heard about what happened on Osage Avenue when they dropped the bomb on the Moo family. A lot of those people were unjustly destroyed in terms of dropping that bomb. And the dropping of that bomb, 61 homes were destroyed along with the lives of 11 people. Six of them 
children, five of adults. We wrote this that very same night in terms of our feelings about what happened on Osage Avenue. This is part of what we turn as the Osage Seed. But this piece is dedicated primarily to the family after, better known to many of us as Moo. What about the after?
through. It does. They'd like to see us all dead and why it's so hard for us to get this through our heads. Genocide against us every day in every conceivable way. Especially the African man. And we forgot the King Alfred plan. Now they're talking about reinstating new laws. from the highest deep that we're tired of what happened to our people. The murder, the killing, the brutality, the rape. We're all standing here at Hell's Gate. They can move toward picking up that gun and it wouldn't be any fun. We'll get down some serious business. Say we got at least a hundred thousand strong. Let these folks know that they're wrong. That Brother Momir isn't going to no electric chair and we'll be willing to stand up for any of their dead. We won't despair. We'll just do what has to be done. We'll show that might, that force, that spirit when we come together as one. Brother Momir, baby, ha! Man, don't worry about a thing, because they're not in control here, and there's really no reason for us to show any fear. Brother Mamiya himself said these words to us, that there's nothing that they can really do. So when you're deep and stressful, you do hold true. And let them confront us with the threat of death. That's the most that they can do. At its best. But when your perspective, you do see clear that threat of death, it holds no fear. Brother Vermeer said that that's the bottom line. And in the passing of time, the strong ones, they persevere and they stay. The weak ones, they slip. And they fade away to the shade. Lord, they escape.
think it's so hard to write these words because life in America, it seems so absurd. It seems useless to have anything to say because we should be dealing with this thing another way. A way that's going to make us appear to be more ass men and women instead of boys and girls needing our parents' permission in a rapidly changing world. A world where each race will have to have its own fig tree and vine just now the unfolding of that time. But America has a fierce grip on our minds. Sometimes
Abu Jamal, the voice of the voiceless. Thank you. George knew that 
just said that he had to make his bid for freedom. And making his bid, he took out five and a half. And as he made his way across the yard, a gunman from the tower shot him dead with a bullet straight through his head. But when I heard the news over the airways that night, I knew that I had to write this for George and Jonathan Jackson, two brothers. I read George Jackson's great book, Soledad Brother. I read George Jackson's great book, Blood in My Eye. I read George Jackson's great book, Dragons Die Hard. And I felt that it was only fitting that I write this for George and Jonathan Jackson, two brothers. Two brothers were born into this world spawn. Very best 
I'm a fire. 